What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Vintage Cube Draft. Where it never matters because your opponents have it all. So we'll see if they have it all this time. Here's the tinker that we've been we've been desperately searching for in the last two drafts. We could take Crater Hoof because god damn, that's a good card. Or we could take Tinker. These are the two cards I want to take. Make your choice now. Tell me what to take. Tell me what to take. I'm listening. Hoof, hoof. Two for hoof, deal. So now we could just take the good green cards, and it's really just academic at that point. Desperate Rit? Haha. <laughs> wow, Desperate Rit and Silver Red Paladins are both terrible. I'm so sad that you guys made those suggestions. Oh, okay. This is this is nice. No green cards. Cool. I'll take a library, I guess. Ah, <sighs> good times. Two packs in, we're already fucking literally cut off. Sounds good. I mean, I guess we'll just take Tireless Tracker. Goodness gracious. Green Sun's probably better, right? We got Crater Hoof. Yeah, we'll take a Green Sun Zenith. Okay, now we're getting there. Plow Under, Devoted Druid, or Wall of Roots. I think it's Plow Under because I think these are replaceable and one of them might even come back. Ugin, also an option. Plow Under is just so backbreaking when it works, though. We just need some more cheap creatures. Birds of Paradise is a cheap... This is... Birds of Paradise is just Gilded Goose before it sucked. <laughs> I'm going to take birds. I mean, if Gilded Goose comes back, though, I'm still going to play it. Vastwood Seer? Sure. We're living the dream right now. That one pack was a little scary, but now we're good. Pelucranos is kind of okay. Pelucranos is a card that it's never exciting, but it's always fine. Or you think Primal Command? Let's well, Primal Command. I think it's probably better than Pelucranos. I think Pelucranos is a little bit replaceable here. Now that the stars are ringing around, I'm beginning to see the light. And nothing. Okay. We'll take a Yorion. In case we splash white and or blue. Well, probably or blue. I, I, I can't imagine we're splashing both of those colors. Pfft. Turn Timber Symbiosis? Just fine. Especially if you hit that hoof. Hoof, there it is. What did it do? What's going on here? What 
what was the white com oh a seer command yeah it's the one that destroys artifacts enchantments creatures with converted mana cost three or less can read converted mana cost four or more yeah i'll take maelstrom pulse for the same reason we took yorion really neither of the white cards are coming back or the green cards that's pretty wild cool sweet First pick Crater Hoof, and then we find that people do not table the uh, the Devoted Druid or the Wall of Roots. It seems like it's going to be a good it's going to be a good draft, guys. <laughs> oh boy, yep, Jason Line Sculptor. Well, I mean, I don't think Rex Sage or Cultivator better than Jace. I'm going to take the Jace. Oh, boy. Avenger of Zendikar, you're probably just with a Dr. Ard. All right. Avacyn's Pilgrim is nice, but it's... It's basically a colorless mana for us. Consecrated Sphinx, huh? I don't hate a Celestia Signet, but in a deck like this, you really just want the colored... the You want the creature mana sources for... Crater hoof, obviously. Yeah, my Christmas was actually great. I got a drone. Michael got me a mox a mox diamond for my cube, which is pretty amazing. Are these sleeves invisible? Yes, they are. It's amazing. I think Eureka's fine. I think it's. I think it's definitely a trap a lot of times, but I think in a deck like this where you can actually put multiple things into play, it's not necessarily. Eureka is definitely not always a trap, and I've definitely won with Eureka several times. I think Eureka is a trap is the thing people say. I think show and tell is a trap, because a one-for-one one threat is not where you want to be. But I think Eureka, when you have a deck like this, and you can put in, like, Crater Hoof, Avenger, Ugin, Karn, on, like, turn four, it's just insane. <sighs> Grim Monolith is great. I still think we want Lana War Elf over it. I don't think. Maybe not, actually. I mean, Grim Mouth is just too good, I think. Yeah, we'll take Dryad here. I really wish Tooth and Nail was in the cube. I think it's a, I think it's a cube staple, and I really, it's, it's frustrating because it's something that like I could go get, I can go get Consecrated Sphinx and Avenger or something, and it's really good. When did Mox Diamond become that expensive? Over the past year and a half, probably. It's just Carney T. It's not exciting. I don't think we're going to be Nick, though, saying Frantic Search doesn't really do anything for us. Sylvan Library seems fantastic here. I will definitely take that. Arbor Elf. I do love an Elder Gargaroth, but we definitely need more one drops. Plus, if we can get a, a breeding pool or a tropical island here, Arbor Elf is actually double blue for Jason Consecrated Sphinx. Wow. Okay, these coming back is really interesting. I kind of wanted the other one, but okay. I guess if I just click on them once individually back and forth, I'm going to select one. I think Cultivate's still good. Plus, we have Trigon Breeder. We can also get um, Acidic Slime, potentially, so... Yeah, now the green card's coming back is very, very strange, and I really don't know what to make of that. Avacyn's Pilgrim comes back. I mean, I will take it. It's still a one-mana elf. I will take the Eureka as well. And I will consider playing it if we get, like, Karn or something. Or Eldrazi, for, for example.
Llanowar elves came back. I mean, Garrick is also fine, but... I mean, you want to maximize the number of one mana guys you get. This is very strange. I'll take an Omnath. We can green sun for an Omnath. I'm going to put the Pilgrim in the sideboard for now. I just don't think it's that... Well, we're definitely taking that. And we're going to take every Eldrazi we see. The only thing we're losing out of this pack is, like, a Hex Drinker. Yeah, that's not even... A, it's not even really a question, though, because it's a friggin' channel. I'm going to take Breeding Pool here. Um, walking Ballista is not super exciting when it comes to channel. Questing Beast might table, but I think we definitely need Breeding Pool if we're playing, like... Consecrated Sphinx or Jace, which I think are high enough power that we should. Draga Tree Speaker, huh? Yeah, definitely taking a Draga Tree Speaker. Uh, still nothing here. I mean, I think we need the Acidic Slime, and I think we also have enough ramp with between, like, Cultivate, Nissa. Yeah, we're definitely taking the Acidic Slime. Oracle of Moldaya. Okay, dokie. Definitely taking Oracle here. This deck is really filling out nicely. I do want, like, an Eldrazi or two for this channel. Imagine if Channel gave you green mana. Jesus, it'd be so good. So good. I don't think Mind Slaver is... Elvish Mystic is fantastic. I don't think Mind Slaver is worth channeling over. Come on. Come on, one Eldrazi is all I want. Gilded Lotus. Nissa. I mean we could definitely we're definitely in a position where we might be able to cut the, the blue cards. Nissa is a banana banger. As we have <laughs> comically said previously. You put the lime in the coconuts and make them bowl up. You put the lime. Nothing. Alright, well. Findhorn Elves. We literally got all of the friggin' Elves. Hex Drinker comes back. Still fine. We'll just win games with Hex Drinker. Walking Ballista? Now I'll take it if no one really wants it. Uh, we'll take a Marai's Wake. We have a Temple Garden. I think you might be able to channel Hex Drinker all the way up. Yeah, it's colorless mana. Yeah, that seems pretty sweet. Actually, for three mana, you go Hex Drinker channel and then just pump it to a, a big fat idiot. So this is 27. The blue cards are so good. That being said, this is 23, and we can probably play that Carnage Tyrant. I mean, this is just a much better mana base. Like, with this many one drops, having a Crater Hoof. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, we'll just play Carnage Tyrant. We're going to play Library just in case. I don't think we're playing Library, actually. Library seems pretty pretty meh in this deck. And then we can play Turn Timber and 15 Forests. Yep, that is correct. I mean, it sucks not playing Jace or Consecrated Sphinx, but it feels... This feels a little better on the mana. Plus, we have a million one-drops. Good lord. Yeah, Channel Green Sun is only three green for, like, any creature in your deck, basically. I mean, it's definitely a problem that we don't have any colorless uh, permanents. And the only thing I saw was Ugin in the very first pack. I don't think we saw Karn or any Eldrazi, to be quite honest. Like, this is just like the last deck in the sense that, like, we just, we see the powerful parts of combos... But then we don't see the other parts. Like, we saw both Blightsteel and Inkwell in the last draft, but we did not see Tinker. You know, like, we... Like, I know we saw other things in that actual... In, like, different archetypes as well. We saw Deceiver Exarch, Enzel's Conscripts, but no Splinter Twin or Kiki Jiki. So, like, you're kind of pulled in these multiple different directions and then none of them really, like, pan out, which is kind of frustrating, but... Alright. Round one. I think we literally have six one-drops or seven one-drops or something ridiculous. This is actually pretty good. If we draw channel, we can literally have a 6-6 six, six protect from everything on turn 2. Oh, good, the mirror match. I mean, our Hex is actually probably fine in this matchup if they just... If they're mono green. Forest and Elf. Sounds good. What about you? Also Forest and Elf. Oh, all right. Oh, I, I see. I'll get another Elf. Sounds good. Well, we were hoping for a channel. Hexy boy. One Hexy Boy. So they have five mana coming up. We have four mana coming up. So. I don't know what the holdup is here. This is a real t -t -t today junior situation. Are they going to play Garrick Relentless and kill one of my creatures? I mean, it's definitely Hex Drinker. Acidic Slime killing Sylvan Library. Pelucranos. Sword. So Plowshare is the elf. Hmm. 
Well, there's no channel here, guys. Um, tempted to go land, pump this guy three. It makes him a four, four. They can't kill it with this. So that's okay. And they only have two cards. I mean, we could also Walking Ballista kill both of these. But that does leave them with one mana to kill this. So I'm going to put on top and put on top and we'll just... Yeah, I mean, it's a 4-4. Four, four. They have two cards. Could be fine. Okay, so they're definitely not mono green. They're definitely playing some sort of ridiculous amount of colors here. Sure. You got it. Yep. Does Green Sun get anything we care about? This is why I like having Rex Sage if you have Green Sun Zenith. It's also awkward because now we have Walking Ballista and they have Noble Hierarch and Arbor Elf. Is that a doctor? Put a lime in the coconut and drink a bowl. If you put a lime in the coconut. See, this is what I mean. Where Pelucranus is not like a, it's not like a fucking windmill slam first pick card by any means. But like, it's still five five. You have to deal with it. It can kill things and get bigger. Like it's, it's a good deal for four mana. You're exiling your own noble hierarch. Got it. Mm -hmm. Still in the upkeep. Do they know that? Sure. <clears throat> oh, they just let it die. Well... I think it's I think we've got a primal command here. We could Nissa attack them for three and then block, but they could also get rid of our creature. So gain seven. Probably put like land on top for them. Does that do anything? No, it's not an land, it's not a creature. Um Yeah, 
Yeah, otherwise I'd put the polluter nose back. What parallax wave is? What does that mean? What are you saying right now? Oh, is this saying no? It just says creature. Yeah, the exile is a creature. It has it doesn't care if it's a land or not. Yes, it definitely can get rid of land creatures. Parallax wave does not get rid of permanence. It gets rid of creatures in general. It does not care about lands. Uh, so I can play against seven. So there's never for a creature. Yeah, I think that's got to be correct. Uh, I don't think there's a creature that answers this, but I mean, like, we can go wide. Like, there's lots of things we can do. <sighs> Carnage Tyrant doesn't do it. I mean, Avenger does. Acidic Slime just kills Parallax Wave next turn, and it does block this, which is pretty good. I mean, we're two lands away from Avenger. Yeah, I'm just going to take... I'm just taking Acidic Slime. Back down to six. Yep, cool. Yep, I mean, that's probably game. Yep, sweet. Parallax Wave, Sun Titan, Pelucranos is what we just fucking lost to. That's amazing. <laughs> that is actually incredible. Um, yep. All right. I mean, I have no idea what this deck is. Like, Parallax Wave, Sun Titan, uh, Pelucranos, like, what? I said, Doctor. Put the lime in the Drink the bowl of the fucking lime and the cocoon. Put them all together. This is uh, why well, they're really taking their time sideboarding here. It just makes me wonder if the power level of like Jace and Consecrated Sphinx is enough to and enough to put them in the deck. And Birds of Paradise, Cultivate, Dryad, Breeding Pool. I mean, we have Channel because it's good with Hex Drinker. It's fine with Walking Ballista. I mean, we we don't have a ton of targets for for Channel, admittedly, but. I don't think it's a card you really cut from a green deck. I mean, Mirari's Wake is, is is very similar to Channel in the sense that we just don't have a big payoff for it. And I also don't think it's worth the mana for it. Like, we have one Temple Garden, and that's pretty much it. I, I'd, I'd much rather splash, like, these two off of Breeding Pool and significant number of islands, because I just think they're significantly stronger let's keep
<laughs> wow. Jesus, what an actual asshole. Joke's on you, buddy. Let's get a Draga Tree Speaker here, because I think that's probably going to be better next turn, because we don't have anything to do. Sure, dude. <laughs> Fucking incredible waste. I feel like these are just. I feel like these are wastes, to be honest with you. Okie dokie. Against the mono green deck seems very good. Could have played turned him or symbiosis there, but one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, if we hit a land, I'm gonna feel bad about it, but, and we did. But we can still just cast this, so. Well, you didn't have anything to do last turn, so. I assume you don't have anything to do this turn either. Hmm. Now I'm just tempted to put this on top. <laughs> That's, actually seems pretty decent. Yeah, we're just gonna, still, it's still good enough to keep. Uh, put a non-creature permanent on top of our library and search for a creature. See, this is what you get for being a little jerk. I'll take acidic slime. You know what? We could have taken a, a bigger threat, but I mean, acidic slime next turn if we don't hit a land is totally fine. Yeah, it's actually pretty decent. I actually don't even want to play this as a land, to be honest with you. Because I think we can just cast the next turn if we hit a land, and then we get... <laughs> See? Now we got now we got all the things, yes. Always yield 5, 6, 7. Okay, sounds good. Well, that was pretty good. Yep, this seems fine if we hit a land. Hmm. 
We did not hit a land. Alright. Fingers crossed. Oh, look at your little Siggy. Land. Oh, we're so good at this game. All right, well, next time we can go Oracle. So hopefully we either draw land or hit a land on top. Those are the uh, those are the preferences. So where they go, Pelucrans? Parallax Wave, sure. Okay, well. It's just not exciting. <laughs> like, okay, you got rid of one guy, sounds good. I'm still gonna play Oracle. I mean, Parallax Wave is great if you want to, like, survive certain turns and, like, get rid of things that are threats, but... Sweet. We also have five lands, so if this survives and we hit a land on top, we just get to... Flip our Nissa, which seems good. One, two, three, four, five, six mana. Seven mana. <laughs> Fucking incredible. <laughs> Seems good. Cool. Brian, what's going on, my dude? Yep. <laughs> Fucking ha amazing a hand against uh, the green deck. Of course we have to play against a Leshnorn round one in both drafts. You got it. Oh, boy. So, just to be clear, next turn we, we get back a 1-1 one, one and a Forest. And the 1-1 one, one dies immediately because we just don't have an answer to an Aleshnorn. That's really cool. For Monolith, okay. So we get to go up to six lands instead. This is just really just an uphill battle, dude. Sure. <laughs> just having no fucking answer to this stupid card is just fucking so infuriating. They'll just die immediately, but it still puts a 5-5 five, five on the board, I guess. So that's something. Sure. 
I just I don't think our deck has a single answer for this card. So. Oh, it's a 3-3, three, three, actually. It doesn't put a 5-5 five, five on the board. I'm an actual idiot, so. Never mind. I mean, we'll give it one more draw step and then pretty much concede because they got to play one card against us that we couldn't answer. Yep, no natural order. No cards to channel into. No Ugin or Karn. Yeah, like, these decks have just been fucking super mediocre, and it's just really frustrating. Like, sure, sweet 4-5. Why are these plays taking so long? You have one card in your hand. I don't understand. Like, why does it take you three minutes to play a Trigon Predator? This is why I have Song of the Dryads in my deck, actually, in my cube. I, I think it's a fantastic card. It's a three-man enchantment that makes a creature in 04. Makes a permanent in 04, I believe. Oh, no, it actually makes it a forest. <laughs> so it ramps them one, but, like, it turns your Aleshnorn into, like, nothing. So this is, what, a 5-4? You know what? Sure. M maybe they don't... Maybe they just run their stupid Aleshnorn into the board and we get to double block. Never happening in a million years, but... <sighs> they just attack two turns of Trigon Predator. So... <sighs> or they do that. Cool. Never don't have it. All right, let's uh, let's jump back in again. This is this has been the most miserable start to a vintage cube I can remember in recent memory. Like all my decks feel just super mediocre and terrible, and they just don't come together at all. And they're just like they're 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 solid archetypes that are missing like one or two key components. If we had a channel here, it'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> oh, we did not. I'm actually just gonna pump one and play Elvish Mystic. If we hit another land, we can play. Oh, I'm just not gonna attack as well. It, that's my fault. I'm just a little tilted right now. But if we play, if we play, if we hit a land, we can go Garrick into. Untap two into Hex Drinker as a four four, so just went a little too quick there. I mean I'm sure they're gonna kill one of these things. Yep, of course. So Yep, and no land. Sounds good. Sixteen lands and six elves. Uh, but wow, this is a interesting series of lands here. Avenger of Zendikar. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's well, Avenger of Zendikar here. I'll put this guy on top. Put this on top. And Cultivate next turn is actually pretty decent. Or we can just draw land and play Crater Hoof. That would be cool too. Uh, okay. 
turn five Electromancer. Is this where they kill us? <laughs> With their four color storm deck? I mean, they can go ritual. They have six cards. They could definitely go ritual, ritual. It's, you know, stuff. Black Lotus. Regrowth, the Banefire. Sounds good. Not great, but. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we're just gonna put on top. Put on top. Grimmy Monolith. We're just gonna kill him here. Try to, anyway. But do we do bop down? They can't even have days because they have lumbering falls. Yep, yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> See, this feels like a Eureka deck. Or a Eureka, like... Yeah, I feel like we're bringing in this, this, and this. Take out Walking Ballista. Take out, like, five of these. Six, actually. And we're gonna go... Uh, one, two, three, four, five... And breeding pool. So we're running what, two cards? Hmm. Brought in Jace Consecrated Sphinx Eureka. We took out Walking Ballista so far. We could probably take out one of these elves. I think this is probably fine. Mm, okay. That was a good hit. Cultivate next turn is nice. Um, yeah, let's get two green. So next time we can play Acidic Slime. That seems good. Oh, okay. So you're playing one land. Are they going to Time Twister here? That'd be pretty sweet, because then they get to replay all their lands. Okay, so they just played one extra land. I'm not sure I understand. Oh, they got Cryptic Command. Venser. I care about that less. No attacks. Hmm. Well, I don't want to do that because then they just get to. Okay, they just concede. All right, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Concede. Sounds good. What can you do?
Oh, we're one one. And now it's going to take 14 years to find a match. This is an interesting hand. I'm going to keep it. One land lets us go channel into Walking Ballista, which could be pretty sweet. You too. I will likely need it. Zimini Pot, what up, my dude? I hope you had a, I hope you had a great holiday as well, my, my man. Land? Bird of Paradise is like a land. How big do we make our channel? That's the question. I know Vintage Cube is swinging and stuff, but have you played a game where it was actually interactive and either you or the opponent hasn't played one thing the other just couldn't answer? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Oh, Lord. So we can go channel into, like, Walking Ballista for a million? The problem is I don't think that's really a solid play here. But how was your Festivus? Well, no one won the Feats of Strength, unfortunately. Okay, that's fine. See, now I kind of want to play a channel. What do we got? Three, four, five, we have six mana... One, two, three, four. Give me a green on top. Dang it. So we could just channel Walking Ballista for four, five, six. Feliz Navidad, Prospero, It's not going to be an exciting channel, but. One, two, three. Thirteen, fourteen, done. All right. Well, having Oracle on top is not the worst, especially because we have Nissa to go find a land. Of course, we're at six. So they could just go like, Lightning Helix, Lightning Bolt. What the fuck? Mishra's Workshop. What is this deck? What are we playing against? What is even happening right now? Oh, that's a good dude. Okay, well. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> it's really frustrating. Nope, and there couldn't have been a land on top. That would have been just too good. <laughs> oh, so we just block. This guy deals us four. Yeah, 14 mana and only playing a walking ballista is not as good. Hmm. 
Yep. I'd rather take three than four here. <laughs> for obvious reasons. I mean, I'm pretty sure we're just blocking with Nissa. Like, the alternative was, was going to uh, two instead. Yes. Okay, so this is four, five. We get to kill this. Hmm. So I'm pretty sure if we get to untap, we're okay. Because then we get to Primal Command? Oh, God. Oh, no attack? And no spell. One, two, six... Yeah, we're just going to Primal Command and search for a creature. God. <laughs> I mean, maybe we just put a land on top? Like, I mean, we have things to do in hand. And the reason we're doing this is because if they didn't have a play last turn, they might not have a play this turn. I do kind of like Sylvan Library here, but I, I don't know if it's worth not playing a Cultivate because of that. Wow, if that were, that's pretty good for us. Ugh, of course there's a land on top. That is unfortunate. Yeah, still not attacking. Okay, they're going to Mystical Tutor. So they'll never get their Copper Line Gorge back again. But 10 life should put us pretty safe, and a Thirst for Knowledge is not super exciting. We also know their Copper Line Gorge is right underneath that, so... sure so gorge in hand unless they discard that they're probably gonna have I and mean, if they discard like if we put this on top they would easily discard this which so i'm glad we did with go with the land sunbird's invocation is a sweet card they discarded a lotus petal Okie dokie. Well, so yeah, that's probably the end. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is 6. This is 4. 6. Carnage Tyrantos. Get in there with this guy. Okay, so I assume they're going to get like Blightsteel Colossus. Inkwell Leviathan. Metalworker. Okay. All right, 6-6, six, six, protection from the world. We're not going to attack because we assume they're going to play Blightsteel. And that's no good. I mean, Craterhoof can still win us the game, but we're not going to draw it, so that's rough. I, I think Sylvan Library would have been what we needed to hit here. I think shuffling that away was probably a mistake on our part. 
Inkwell I'm fine with because we have no islands. Yep, that's fucking exactly what we didn't want to see. I think we can <laughs> prevent death on in two turns, but I don't know, three turns is going to be rough. This is an easy block here. So this is actually seven, so we take four. Yeah, that's fine. Why it has trample, I don't know. Well, I can't play that guy off the top. And we're just going to risk it for the biscuit here. Yep, alright, cool. I guess you have also Inkwell Leviathan. Fucking amazing. <laughs> it never fucking fails, dude. It's unreal. Oh, look, Crater Hoof is two turns away. Sounds good. Alright. Cool. Day of Judgment doesn't even kill the stupid Colossus. Okie dokie. <laughs> it can, but it has Trample, so we're still taking five. And, like, now they have Inkwell, so it's, like, not even... Take a Findhorn Elves out. Walking Ballista doesn't seem to do much. Uh, protection does stop the damage. Like you have to deal. It's got Trample. It can only. It only has to deal. Um, enough to kill it. So it deals six to the to the Hex Drinker, and then it can deal the the remaining five to me. Bring in this guy. This guy. Trigon Predator. Breeding Pool. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So, yeah. All right, we'll try it like this. I do not bring in library now because I never want to. I, I always want to play one mana guys on turn one. This hand actually looks pretty good. Lotus Bloom, huh? Okay. Double these guys. So we're definitely playing Nissa next turn, even though Jace is uh, very, very tempting. Uh, fucking goddamn. Amazing. Actually, we have Jace. That's <laughs> fantastic. All right. See you later, asshole. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's satisfying. Oh man. See, it's just so frustrating though. I'm like so tilted by like these these games, and it's like Jesus. Oh well. Bouncing <laughs> nice sideboard, right? Like, seems good. All right, got a bunch of nonsense here. That was actually pretty good. Oh, acidic slime, huh? Let's. Is it coming down next turn? It is. Oh, we just win the game. That's weird. All right. I will take it. And by the way, I was calling the Blightsteel Colossus an asshole, not my opponent. Just to be clear, I don't want people to be like, "Wow, he just called his opponent an asshole." It's like, no, 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 no. Talking to the Blightsteel specifically. 
I'm talking to the fictional Magic the Gathering creature, guys. They can bring your EK in, and then they go, Blightsteel, Mere Battle Sphere, Inkwell, and you're like, oh, God. Yes to this hand as well. <sighs> Keep. Wow. Rude. Dude, Rex Age is like so missed here. One, one, two. Uh, put on top. Pay to keep. I mean, you can. You're more than welcome to pay uh, with your basalt monolith to kill this. And we're just trying to slam a carnage tire as fast as we can. They could also have tinker, which is just terrible for us. I mean, if they have tinker and channel and forge master. To get Mirror Battle Sphere, Blight Steel, or Inkwell, it's like eh, that's pretty bad. Um, let's give you a forest. Don't really want you having a second blue here. Oh no, acidic slime, please. Oh no. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, that could be bad, but they have two cards in their hand. Oh, God. Three cards now. So I guess the only thing you can play is Battle Sphere, right? Unless all three of them are artifacts. Then they can pl they can't play Inkwell because then they wouldn't have a second blue. Uh, he's still gonna give you still gonna give you green sources here. Narset. Okay. So now you have one card. Oh, Jesus. That's insane if you have something like blood. Oh, God. Oh, they just firebolted that guy. Sure. Um, I mean, I guess we're killing Narset here. Four, five, we go to six. We don't have seven. I mean, Avenger of Zendikar off the top would be good. The thing is, neither of the cards they can get with Karn are great here, so they do have to give they give us a choice. Mirror Battle Sphere, sure. Yep, that's fine. It's not great for us, but it's no oh, an eight eight. Yes, there's there's the one two three. 
Oh yeah, we're definitely paying four here. Oh yeah, we also get to Crater Hoof next turn. All right, we'll see if that'll do it. What is this, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 16, 4, 8, 12, 16, 32 damage. So they can have 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. They get to go to 1. Or they could make a guy with Karn, I guess. That seems like the play. Okay, so they discard the Lotus Bloom. I mean, if they also attack with a construct, they're dead. So. Oh, they didn't make a construct? Okay, now they're dead. <laughs> I guess they go to one if they leave Metalworker alive. I cannot imagine they have a relevant card. Are we 2 one in this draft? And they can't have a counter spell. Put on top, put on top. I'm gonna play both lands here actually just in case they do have like something stupid like days. Oh, I guess I had more than enough mana. They can't actually block a 6-6 six, six with their construct or else they die. Yeah, they actually need all the damage from Metalworker, right? Because this is, what, 9, 15. This is 20. <laughs> so you're going to just put Inkwell into play? Okay, that's weird. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2. Wow, and they get to blow up the... Wow, how is this even possible? That's insane. I mean, I'm actually not even going to kill the Inkwell because it dies at the end of the turn. I'll actually just kill the Mirror. That's pretty insane, actually. Wow. We do have... Symbiotic... Uh, sure. Yep. Mm hmm. Okay. You just take 15, go to one. Yep. This is eight, nine, ten. We're dealing one. Not go to one, go to five. You know what I meant. four there we go we'll figure it out this guy's dead well we know they have stone in, in hand they have whatever was under shell dock and they have a carn on board so that's unfortunate still have a live crater huff okay so they're not o stoning clearly if they're gonna oh they're gonna metal worker show o stone and then o stone Man, this game could be significantly longer now that they... Like, we just have to play around O-Stone. <laughs> That's kind of annoying. We do have a Trigon Predator, though. Hmm. 
Hmm. Actually, Nissa here seems pretty good, but I don't really want to search, so... Um, I think we're going to put this back. We're going to pay four. Or we just play Trigon and pass. What happens if you if you activate Nissa and hit Turn Timber Symbiosis? Can you put it in your hand? Because I know you can play lands off the top of your library with Oracle of Moldiah if they're flip cards. I think going to four is fine here because they lost Inkwell and Mere Battlesphere. Not four, eight rather. Um, I'm going to put this on top, pay four, one, two, three, Nissa. Oh, I guess it's gone now. Damn it. <laughs> hmm. Well, that is a good recovery. So now we can actually, it's cost five. So if they have an artifact, they can put a counter on something. No, they, yeah, they still need an artifact to put a, a counter on something. What are the odds they have Blightsteel Colossus under their Shelldock Isle? They did not put a counter on a thing, so I, I presume they don't have an artifact, maybe? I mean, I kind of feel like you kind of have to blow things up. Like, you don't want to give me more turns with these, right? Plus, I can just kill it with Trigon Predator. And then slam an Avenger? I don't know what's going on here. They're really, they're really thinking this through. I don't think they have any more cards. Yeah, they don't. They have one island for Karn to grab. Okay, I will give you a Spire Bluff Canal and not a Dragon Lord of Tarka. This is, I don't know what's going on. This is a lot of, 
a lot of time to take here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> Never gets any easier, guys. Never fucking gets any easier. They're at four? Dear Lord. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Put you on top. Put you on top. So we're just dead, right? Like, as long as we can't prevent an attack from this idiot. They didn't play the Spire Bluff Canal. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. This doesn't get anything, right? Like, we can't get Jace. We can't get Consecrated Sphinx. We can, but I mean, it's not going to do anything. Yeah, we're just literally dead to a log. Oh, God. The fucking 1-2 train has been real strong recently. They will attack with this guy. We will mill 20 fucking cards. We will go to negative 3 cards. It's not a real thing, but you know what I mean. We will draw on our turn, and we will die. So I guess this is... The best thing we could do. Cool. Yep, that was fun. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully we can do better than 1-2 next time. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. Be sure to support the channel in some way, shape, or form because this is fucking misery. And uh, it's really hard when you do it day after day and this is your job and you have to do it. But um, we soldier through. Thanks for watching, guys. Can you dig for Primal Command? We have no way to really do that, right? And... Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.